Motorola radios have been around for a long time. Nowadays we tend to imagine these sorts of extremely well-made, rugged commercial handsets and mobiles that utilise the latest in radio technology. But did you know that it's just over 80 years since Motorola started development of the first practical application of FM two-way portable radio technology? This came about during World War II when the US Army Signal Corps asked Motorola to come up with a two-way portable that had good range and was better than the sets the US Army was using at the time. The answer was the SCR-536. Development started in 1940 by a team led by Don Mitchell, chief engineer for Galvin Manufacturing, which later became Motorola Solutions. This radio was the first true handheld unit to see widespread use. While these AM two-way portable radios had been a big step beyond hardwired battlefield comm systems, they operated on a single channel, making them easy for the enemy to monitor. In addition, the battery life of the SCR-536 was short. The radio weighed only £5, but it had a range of only 1 to 3 miles. It incorporated five vacuum tubes built into a waterproof case. There was no external power switch, so the operator had to pull out or push in the antenna, which operated an internal switch to turn the radio on or off. The radio operated in AM voice mode only, between 3.5 and 6 MHz over 50 channels. Plug-in crystals and coils were used to control the frequency of the receiver and transmitter and the antenna was a 40-inch telescopic rod that slid into the case. The long antenna became a target for enemy sharpshooters because it had to be held in a vertical position for best transmission. The SCR-536 had an RF output power of just 360 milliwatts. The US Army initially ordered 3,500 of them, and prior to the attack on Pearl Harbor in December of 1941, 50 sets per day were being produced. By the end of World War II, more than 130,000 had been built. The SCR-536 was the first commercially produced two-way portable or handy talkie. The SCR-536 was intended as a radio for infantry company commanders to talk to battalion headquarters, however it immediately became apparent that for this use it was completely inadequate. Ultimately, it went on to be used within infantry companies to communicate down to platoon leaders which was a short-range transmission. However, it was sold on the basis that it could operate over distances of one mile on land and three miles over salt water. But hills, foliage, atmospheric conditions and ground moisture could shrink that distance significantly and so could the battery's age and internal dirt and moisture. The radio leaked water and salt water ruined the sliding switch contacts and to make things worse it required a special battery and the entire supply of batteries for General Patton's Western Tank Force was on one ship which the Germans torpedoed off Casablanca Harbour. Motorola's response for a more advanced radio became the Army's SCR 300 FM walkie-talkie backpack radio. The SCR-300, introduced in 1943 but developed from late 1940, weighed £35 and had rechargeable batteries. It was tunable and could operate on any frequency between 40 and 48 MHz. The set had a range of 10 to 40 miles depending upon terrain. The final acceptance test took place at Fort Knox, Kentucky in the spring of 1942. The performance of the SCR-300 during those tests demonstrated its capacity to communicate through interference. Motorola went on to produce just over 48,000 of these units during the course of World War II. One of the first places it saw combat action was during the Allies' D-Day invasion at Normandy. The SCR-300 also hit the beaches under enemy fire at Anzio, Guadalcanal and Iwo Jima. The British adopted the design of the SCR-300 for their own use from 1947, which became known as Wireless Set No. 31. The SCR-300 was an 18-tube battery-operated transceiver, which used an FM transmitter section and double superheterodyne receiver. It incorporated a squelch circuit, an automatic frequency control circuit, and a crystal-controlled calibration circuit. 
The company's first commercially available FM two-way portable after the war appeared in 1947. Motorola called it a handy talkie, which went on to become a Motorola trademark, describing it as smaller than a briefcase. The transceiver weighed between 8 and 22 pounds and put out 250 milliwatts. This was before the invention of the transistor, so the unit used miniature tubes. Motorola's first all-transistor handy talkie pocket receiver was introduced in 1958, with its companion transmitter coming out in 1959. The first all-transistor Motorola handheld portable two-way radio was the HT200 that was introduced in 1962. It weighed only 33 ounces. Technology had come a long way in the 19 years between the introduction of the 35-pound SCR300 and its direct descendant, the Motorola HT200.